I wonder if it's an easy joke to say, Hawks has flipped the bird. Yep, too easy. After the ranking was decided, it's time for a speech from the top 10 heroes. However, it wasn't going to be smooth sailing. As the chapter title reads, it's the introduction of Hawks, who may have rank at number 2. But arrogant enough to sabotage the premise, the chapter may be shorter than usual, but it did fulfill to introduce his character properly, as well as slowly introduce the next focus of the arc. The chapter cover is a quick recap of the last chapter in terms of ranking as well as the system's concept. It's the same as last chapter on how the ranking works, such as tallying a hero's achievement based on incidents they resolve, contribution in society, and approval rating. The only new noteworthy is the scale of the incident in which can reward them at a larger rate. Think as playing a hard level in RPG. The experience points you'll gain will be higher than playing that easy. Other than that, it's still kind of odd. Hawk shows a sign of his personality to be laid back when he tries to whisper to Endeavor about the feel of being number one. It was at that point that I had a feeling that he's going to say or do something reckless, which turned out to be true later on. In any case, the idea now is to have all top 10 heroes to share their comment. Some of the comments can be described as by the book lines or generic. Ryukyu is upset that she doesn't feel her rank is justified as she let down the citizens, but she will continue to do her best. It would be nice to know ahead if this is seed planted for development in a large scale, but I am having a tough time to believe so. Many character speech go over quickly with a simple line, including Wash. I still want to know his backstory. It's a bit of a shame since this was a good time to learn about them. Perhaps if the chapter was at normal length, we would have time to get to know them better. While it does serve a purpose, it wouldn't hurt to exploit them. All we got is Ryukyo, who we already know, and Crust, due to how he was so touched by her speech that he spoke up before his turn. He's pretty energetic, like many characters here, though I find him a bit amusing. The purpose is to slowly build up Hawk's annoyance from their lack of energy in their speeches, or rather what he believed should be accomplished. Perhaps it was designed for the heroes to speak with generic lines in order to upset Hawks, who then interrupts Edshaw's speech. How nice of him to interrupt a cool design hero. He's no stranger in causing a stir in an important time based on Miracle's reaction, so you already know he's arrogant. His speech comes off true, yet rude and uncalled for due to bad timing. He does have a point about All Might's retirement and his effect. He was the symbol of peace. Now that he's gone, every other heroes are acting like things are normal. Citizens need encouragement and hope to feel safe. Though that seems selfish to rely on them constantly, but I digress. Sounds like the Powerpuff Girls episode plot. Can't believe I made that reference. The point is, they should be motivated and secure if the hero they can rely is trustworthy enough like All Might. It makes sense why he believe approval rating is what matters the most. All Might did have that sealed, but now that he's retired, who they can rely on just as much? He indirectly, yet probably intentionally sabotage Endeavor since he doesn't have much prestige to say he's very reliable. He may have dealt with a lot of incidents, but his fame is questionable. It's a little weird to say the story is going to support the system and that's the theme, but I will wait and see how it plays off first. It's a bit tricky, I'll say that much. Endeavor is still growing as a character, so it does appear that this is the arc that will help him to prove his stance. It's a good thing his response is simple yet effective, stating that he can prove to be number one by watching him. Of course, in backstage, he does take his grudge on Hawks for messing up the flow and put him in a very uncomfortable position. Speaking of Hawks, it's worth mentioning that he's at age 22, a really young age to be ranked 2. It is said that he goes too fast. By that, I mean his pacing and accomplishment. He already started an office at 18, which is like right after graduating high school, and already ranked in the chart by the second half of that year. I think that's an important info. 
since it suggests that his attitude and mindset is still young, has the timing and response. He's not a fan of all might, so this more or less fits in well with Endeavor. Then again, Endeavor is more like love and hate relationship mixed with rivalry. The point is, Hawks is targeting more on the leadership a la rank 1, so he meant no harm against him and thought he was pretty cool. I feel that his character may go through a development of maturity since his action is based off of his age more so than his personality. I know it sounds weird saying that, but maybe in Denver could teach him a lesson which could be a way to show development. The plot begins to resurface when Hawks asks Endeavor to team up in an upcoming crisis. The last couple of panels give you an idea that the next arc is going back to more serious base. The only question left is who will get involved outside of those two. Anyway, the problem arises when a secret hideout, which seems to be located at a daycare or a kindergarten, reveals the next evolution of Nomu. The original ones have been taken out before, but not that easily, so the credibility of a threat is still good. They have yet become Muso's enemy alas body bags for heroes. Therefore, the next evolution does give a credible sense of danger. Supposedly they are called high end, unless that thing is only called by the former self. It looks intimidating and the fact it can speak, but barely, it has intellect and that's troubling. Who can it be? I can't say. Wouldn't it be brutal if it was a kid since they are hiding there? I believe the idea is just a hideout in a place no one would expect. I mean if it was the case, wow dark. Overall, it was decent chapter that dropped a hint on the next arc's focus. It mainly focused on Hawk's character who can be interesting when done right. He does have potential and despite his attitude, he's not so bad. Endeavor is slowly improving, but with Hawks, he is challenged in his position. We'll see what direction or theme this will be about. The art is solid and the design of High End is scary looking, which is good. Will this art only consist those two heroes or should we expect more getting involved? We shall see. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. What do you think of Hawk's character? Who do you think is going to get involved with this mission? If it is going to be a mission, will it just be those two and Denver and Hawks? Or they will bring along with some of the students such as Tokoyami, which would make sense since he did intern with Hawks. Maybe this would be a good time to have his development arc. Same can be applied to Shoto. I wonder how Deku is going to get involved, unless he's not going to get involved. That will be a nice change of pace. What do you think of the chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.